Uh, my name is Dr. Naila Kalas. Um, like Harriet said, I'm specialized in occupational medicine and I'm a physician specialist for the Department of Public Health. Thank you for inviting me to present uh, to your committee today. Uh, my talk will be on senior citizens and COVID-19. Okay, um, let's see here. This is, um, I will begin with a disclaimer, um, the information surrounding COVID-19 and its vaccination um, are constantly changing and this presentation highlights these information. So what we know about COVID-19. Okay, COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. The effect of this virus can be different from person to person. Some people show uh, no symptoms, while other um, show mild to moderate symptoms. Older adults, uh, people with, uh, with certain medical condition, have higher risk for developing severe symptoms. In general, types of symptoms may vary, uh, most notably, People can uh, transmit the virus even if they are um, asymptomatic. Okay, all right. Is this easier to see? Okay. So um, long COVID or post COVID condition is defined as having a new or ongoing symptoms for weeks or months after getting infected with COVID-19. People who had um, no symptoms or mild symptoms when they were infected can still have post-COVID um, symptoms. Uh, these symptoms include uh, tiredness, um, headaches, joint muscle pain, um, mood or sleep changes, respiratory symptoms, and difficulty thinking. Um, for latest updates on uh, long COVID, uh, you can visit the CDC um, website. So now I'm going to discuss COVID uh, vaccination and senior citizens. There are so many um, challenges that senior face. Uh, first, we have disparities within older population. Uh, fewer Blacks and Latinos uh, over 65 years old have been vaccinated than white adults. Um, about 68% Blacks and 73% uh, Latinos have been fully vaccinated, while 80% uh, of white older adults are fully vaccinated. There are, um, and there is uh, the challenge of technology and access, like difficulty in making appointments and having internet access and as well as a device. So um, other technology access um, challenges include lack of um, reliable um, uh, internet access among seniors. In fact, according to a research study on low income uh, focus group, um, done at USC, only 35% of older adults have computers or tablets with internet, and only 50% have smartphones. So uh, we are, uh, as we're focusing um, in this presentation um, on Inglewood and Hawthorne, I thought to um, talk a little bit about um, the current demographics. Um, we start first with Inglewood demographics. We have 12.3 of the total population are senior adults. 84.3 of them are fully vaccinated and only 27% uh, of them are, uh, have received an additional dose or booster. There are five hospitalizations so far within the last 14 days with 130 positive cases and one death due to COVID. As for Hawthorne, um, there are 
8.9% um, of the population are senior citizens. 78.9% of them are fully vaccinated and only 27% of them have received an additional dose or booster. Mm. There are four hospitalizations within the last 14 days with 74 positive cases and two deaths due to COVID. I'll talk now about COVID-19 uh, vaccine, vaccine hesitancy. Usually developing a new vaccine takes years. The reason for being able to fast track COVID vaccine is because scientists have already studied other coronaviruses and have extensively worked on mRNA and viral vector vaccines. With sufficient funding and well-established network uh, to conduct COVID vaccine trials, ensuring safety was part of every step of developing the vaccine. Manufacturing um, of the vaccine was initiated uh, while trials were uh, still underway. Producing mRNA vaccine are faster than traditional vaccine. Authorization for COVID vaccines were prioritized by both FDA and CDC as COVID vaccines are being held to the same safety standards as all other vaccines. Um, to, um, to ensure the safety of COVID-19 um, vaccine um, is top uh, priority. Safety that a data was um, reviewed by independent medical and public health experts prior to authorization. Recommendations uh, were made to FDA and CDC. Then FDA issued an emergency authorization, which called EUA, uh, which is used when um, the expected benefits outweigh uh, potential risk. After authorization, um, safety uh, monitoring continued. Uh, by FDA and CDC to identify any rare side effects and investigate um, any possible problems. Uh, a new app uh, called vSafe uh, provided an uh, extra monitoring system to follow uh, up with people uh, in the studies and act as, um, for, as a registry for pregnant women. All of the three approved vaccinations uh, or vaccines were studied in tens of thousands of volunteers. Um, the studies included a um, diverse mix of people or older adults and people with underlying health conditions and people with, uh, of color. Half of the participants got the vaccines while um, the other half got placebo. All the three vaccines we um, found to be effective and safe. So basically, since uh, December 2020, hundreds of millions of people in the U.S. have safely received uh, a, vac uh, a COVID-19 vaccine. To address vaccine hesitancy, the Department of Public Health is providing community toolkits offering community presentations on COVID and COVID vaccines and addressing misinformation, uh, doing town halls um, that educate um, community members about COVID, um, uh, any COVID updates. What are the safety uh, procedures for seniors in skilled nursing facilities and congregate settings? All right, so we have uh, effective guidelines in place, um, such as providing proof of vaccinations for staff and general visitors. We are uh, tracking vaccinations among um, residents and new staff hires and um, assessing the vaccination status <clears throat> residents um, uh, admission. Other important guidelines include performing entry screening, uh, conduct uh, 
symptoms and uh, temperature screening for all staff and residents, support good um, workforce health, reinforce social distancing and hand um, and hygiene, um, enhance environmental disinfection, um, hygiene, uh, yeah, environmental disinfection and um, request that faculty uh, facility demonstrate having at least two weeks supply of PPE and other um, um, uh, supplies. Now I'm, I'm going to switch to discuss about the variant. Uh, in the US, the CDC has tracked four variants of concern. These are alpha, beta, gamma, and, um, and delta. Alpha was first detected in the UK, then was detected in the US uh, in December 20, uh, 2020. Beta was detected in uh, South Africa, then was uh, detected in the US in January 2021. Gamma was found in Brazil, then tracked in the US in January 2021. Um, and finally, Delta, which was first detected in India, then it was detected in the US in March of this year. The most recent variant, Omicron, has not yet been detected in the US. It was first sequenced in, in November 24th and was named um, and put on the list for a variant of concern by uh, the World Health Organization in November 26th, which was four days ago. And by November 27th, at least 115 cases uh, were reported in more than uh, seven countries. Though Omicron has not been detected in the US so far, it is only a matter of time before cases will be identified, unfortunately, as there are still millions of US population being unvaccinated. We know from sequencing the new variant that there are many mutations in an important area of the virus that impact infectiousness, as well as the ability of our immune system to protect uh, from infection. We still don't know if Omicron is capable of causing severe COVID illness compared to the other variants, but current data show that COVID vaccines are effective in preventing bad outcome from infection. In preparing for a possible surge in cases with Omicron uh, variant, California Department of Public Health um, is monitoring for new cases through um, California SARS-CoV-2 for genome sequencing uh, initiative known as uh, COVID-NET. Uh, COVID um, California Department of Public Health is partnering also with CDC to gather information and ex expertise to help public um, and local health uh, Department of Public Health and healthcare providers as a uh, preparation Testing for COVID-19 has been augmented across airports in California and all U.S. Um, residents and legal residents coming from South Africa and other African countries um, like um, Botswana, Zimbabwe, uh, Namibia, Lesotho, uh, Eswatini, Mozambique, and Malawi all these countries uh, which showed that um, there are uh, spread of uh, Omicron um, in them. These are the country that uh, we're testing American citizen coming. Yeah. All right, so um, this is a graph that shows most commonly identified variants among um, uh, LA County residents as percentage of sequencing reported to public health. As we see, the red color has been for uh, the dominant, uh, the current dominant uh, Delta variant. This is uh, might change, unfortunately, again in the future uh, with the spread of 
on the phone. The question we continue to ask as new variants are emerging. Do COVID vaccines protect U.S. Um, against other variants? The answer is most likely yes. Um, all three authorized vaccines used in the U.S. have been highly effective in preventing serious illness, hospitalization, or death. Though for people who are partially vac vaccinated, the uh, protection might not be as The only way for a strong protection against variant is to get vaccinated. Wear a well-fitted mask. Surgical masks are more protective than fabric masks. And washing and sanitizing hands uh, often, that we all know that. And avoid crowded uh, gatherings and keep, uh, of course, six feet social distancing as much as possible. And of course, uh, when gathering indoors, make sure that there are sufficient ventilations in the area where you are at. So what about the flu? As we know, um, influenza is a contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza virus. Symptoms can include fever, headache, extreme uh, fatigue, dry cough, sore throat, muscle aches. The flu season typically occur between the end of March, but it can circulate throughout the year. In comparing signs and symptoms between flu and COVID, we document more serious illness in some people with COVID infection. It takes longer uh, for COVID to show symptoms and people can be more contagious for longer. Since symptoms are mostly similar between uh, COVID and flu, the only way to um, is to diagnose uh, um, flu or COVID is through testing. Um, these are the common symptoms uh, between uh, COVID and flu. In the flu, of course, these are shared symptoms. In the flu, we find fever, chills, uh, cough, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, fatigue, and so forth. Um, in addition to these symptoms in COVID, we have runny and stuffy nose. Uh, we have muscle pain, body aches, headaches, vomiting, diarrhea, loss of taste or smell, which is common uh, with COVID. How long symptoms appear after exposure to infection. Uh, for both uh, flu and COVID, it takes um, one or more days for uh, a person to become infectious and start to um, experience symptoms. For flu, a person usually experiences experience, uh, symptoms anywhere from one to four days after infection. However, for COVID, a person experiences uh, um, symptoms about five days after getting infected, but um, symptoms can appear two to 14 days after infection. So it's a longer, um, like I said, it's a longer time for COVID um, in, a, in infectious period. Can people uh, um, be infected with both flu and COVID at the same time? Um, the short answer is yes. Since they are caused by two different viruses, mm -hmm. for vaccination is the best way for uh, to both prevent illness and prevent spreading illness from flu and um, COVID-19. Uh, Since flu viruses are always mutating, it's important to get vaccinated against flu every year once the vaccine is available. Who are um, the um, high risk people? We know that um, being unvaccinated uh, puts people under um, even healthy ones at um, risk for serious illness, hospitalization, and death. The highest uh, risk individuals are elderly, 
people with certain underlying medical conditions, even including infants and children, I'm going to mention that later, uh, pregnant women, and of course, children uh, younger than five years old. And overall, as we mentioned before, um, COVID seems with more illness in some people. Um, so as for vaccination resources in LA County, so um, there are um, many sites that are open, uh, weekends and evenings. There are no need for appointments. Um, there are free um, transports available and even we have in-home vaccination available for certain population. Um, you can visit uh, Vaccinate LA County um, English or they have um, a Spanish website. And um, when you, once you click how to get vaccinated and you put your zip code, um, you can find a location near you. Or you can also uh, call the Department of Public Health vaccine center and um, this is uh, a line that's open from 8 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Um, CDC also has great resources. The website has various uh, vaccine tools and resources, information regarding vaccine administration, storage, reporting, patient education and uh, more are all uh, in the uh, um, CDC website. And also there they have resources for professional um, healthcare information. Also locally, we have great resources through the Department of Public Health by subscribing to Lo um, Los Angeles Health Alert Network, which is called LAHAN. Um, it's a great resource for local and national um, disease outbreaks and health risks. Um, you can sign up for, um, for this letter, the LAHA, um, or you can go first to uh, COVID. You can go to, again, vaccinelacounty.com or covid.lacounty.com. For the flu information, you can do, um, or go to eventflula.com. And this presentation hopefully will uh, be available for you to, you can uh, get those websites uh, if you need them. Okay, um, so as for coping with stress during um, the pandemic, um, this is uh, recommendations for even um, uh, patients and uh, providers, because um, the stress is, is really common uh, nowadays with the pandemic. So what we need to do is uh, to stay up to date with information on credible sources. I, I say credible sources because there's so much misinformation out there and we have to make sure that to filter the, <coughs> the sources that are cre credible. And as I mentioned, CDC, and the local um, Department of Public Health are uh, credible sources for um, this information, the up-to-date information. Uh, practice regular self-care every day. Be mindful about all the preventive measures that we discussed before. Uh, stay connected with friends, family, and community groups through um, social networking and phone calls. Um, meetings like this meeting, meetings and uh, teams meetings are very helpful to keep connected uh, with people and um, talk about issues and um, discuss um, um, problems with uh, various social problems, social issues at schools and um, restaurants or uh, availability. Seek out help when needed. Um, there is an app called I Prevail. It's LA County iprevail.com. It's a free online mental health resource for uh, Los Angeles County residents, courtesy of the Department of Mental Health. This uh, support is 24 um, 7 available, and um, you can connect 
uh, with a trained peer specialist uh, join a committee, a uh, support group, or try one of many digital uh, For more resources, uh, visit the Department of uh, Mental Health at dmh.lacounty.gov or call this phone number listed. And again, the calls um, are available 24 7. Um, so uh, this is uh, more resources um, if to visit the department, uh, uh, to reach out to the Department of Public Health for more information. And um, there, are, uh, there are Facebook, you have YouTube, uh, several social media um, outlets to reach our Department of Public Health. And we're, again, it's 24 7 service that's uh, available in. Different, many different levels. And now it's time for the questions. And um, yeah, please, if you have any question or concern, let us know. And that's the end of my presentation. Okay, so everyone could uh, unmute now. We take down the uh, oh. yeah. okay. Oh. Okay, you can unmute and ask questions now. Oh, is how do you how uh, so how do you see the people? in Inglewood and Hawthorne as far as what what services that could they use or what uh, how could we help turn around some of the bad st the negative st statistics that uh, about not having uh, the Im immunizations and so or so forth um I can answer that Okay. So, in general, <clears throat> in the beginning of the pandemic, obviously, um, it was very vaccine scarcity was upon us. So, um, people who were only 65 and older were able to get the vaccine, and they were only available in certain locations. But now we're, we have um, megapods, and we have also vaccine distribution throughout LA County. So, I think but the statistics are that we presented um, both Inglewood and Hardon are faring pretty well in terms of like their vaccination rate. So Inglewood has about 84% of its seniors vaccinated. Um, the other portion could be due to, you know, um, people not wanting to get vaccinated for various reasons or not having the correct information about the vaccine. So it's very important that uh, we do these presentations. So. <clears throat> for our department in particular, we do do presentations on the vaccine as well as um, COVID just in general. So if people wanted that information, we're able to get it to them. Uh, and then other resources, like we said, so like the mental health piece, I know that's a big deal for people, especially dealing with isolation during this time and learning how to, um, you know, keep in touch that way. We're also, I also work for um, the Curtis Sucker Public Health Center. So I do work in Inglewood and we will be offering, I know next month, a um, program with, with, that'll be in person at our community center. So we have a center for community wellness and it's a program that they'll come out to our center to help people use or understand how to use their phones. So they teach you how to use your smartphone. So if you have a smartphone, iPhone or Android or any other telephone device, they will assist you with learning how to use it. So that can assist with, with helping with the gap in um, services. There's also a telephone number people can call to get their appointments scheduled as well. So there's a number of resources that seniors can access. It's just a matter of like getting the resources out there. We do do outreach as well, but sometimes we can't get to everywhere because um, our community health workers do get pulled to do other assignments. 
So it's not like we can always be out in the community. We're always out in the community, but it might not be to the particular community at need sometimes. Is the uh, Center for Community Wellness in Inglewood, is that up and running? Yes, ma'am. Was it some, uh, I don't know, I read like it was uh, moved from one place to another, or is it something new, or is it? No, it's new. So we opened up our center last year, and obviously that was during the, the peak of the pandemic. So we opened it in 2020 in September. And the point of the center is to offer um, services around mental health, uh, nutrition and wellness, as well as substance abuse prevention um, and treatment. So we offer programming in that realm and we offer programming virtually online as well. So most of our programs have been online and um, I can send you the calendar and all that you can share out with your community as well. Uh, we do, we are having program in person but it's just very limited because people are still leery about coming to um you know in-person programming so we've had um anthem come to do annual enrollment for um for the next year for open enrollment for medicare we have um we did have our mental health services do in-person programming but we didn't really get a big turnout so they're still on virtual right now especially as the holidays roll in and then um, we have nutrition and cooking classes that are done virtually as well, but those are in Spanish at this moment. And then um, we're also going to have other programming in the future. Okay. 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 Tyler, did you finish? Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Well, we all, all is free, and um, we do welcome everybody to come. We'll be hosting a blood drive on the 23rd, and I can send you information about that as well. Okay. So is, is it well advertised uh, throughout the city to people well aware of this program, of this facility? that's what we're working on so like that's the the challenging part for us at this is that we um we we're open <laughs> and we can get people to use it so our caveat is that if you're providing a service through the center it has to be free for the community so if you wanted to do like a zumba class or like a cooking class or anything like that it has to be free to the community members that <clears throat> you would service um, so we're doing our best to, to re-strategize and get our outreach out there and just get more people aware of our center. Um, we did host like a health fair in October, but we didn't really get a major turnout. We had vaccine clinics. We did a flu clinic. Um, we just did a COVID vaccine clinic as well for people experiencing homelessness. So it's just like, it's, it's hit or miss, I'll be honest. Maybe we um, need we do to want more people to come. Maybe we need to come out and see what it see what it looks like. And um, yeah, of course, we're 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 taking we're accepting tours right now too. So um, I will have one scheduled tomorrow, but I'm gonna cancel because I'm gonna take the day off because I don't feel well. But um, <clears throat> if you would like to come, you're more than welcome to come and see it. It's located right there, off of Manchester and the Brea. Are there other questions or from the doctor? There, is there any thought of doing pop-up vaccination clinics at the shopping malls where all the people are going for holiday shopping? I know that they did some at some of like Dodger Stadium and the stadiums. And a, a lot of people, I think, took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, to my knowledge, I'm not, I, I can't even 100% speak to that, but I know that they're constantly working on getting vaccination sites up and running, especially like, for example, right now with the Omicron um, variant that's coming out, we're going to have our community health workers deploy to the airport to do like, um, like right there, uh, education and information about vaccines. So just so people are aware and then they can, if they need to get vaccinated, I believe they'll probably have a vaccination site there. As far as like other places, I'm sure that that could possibly be in the works, but if not, it'll just be constant promotion to, to places in which um, 
vaccine, like back for vaccine equity or places that are not getting a huge outreach. So that's where like they're trying to focus the need on because when you got when the didn't happen in the beginning when we were at the forum, um, we noticed that like it wasn't a, it was people coming from far and wide to get the vaccine and not people locally. So that's why it was like important to like expand that so you can get your vaccine at home. You can get your vaccine at um, Rouse, well not Rouse, but like Walgreens and CVS and things like that. So that expansion really helped people. So it's just a matter of like, at this point, we know that if people who wanted to get vaccinated got vaccinated. So it's just about reaching the people who still have those like hesitations and worries and doubts and just providing that on the spot education. Taylor, uh, can I can I jump in for a second? This is Thomas you all. Mm -hmm. I'm from the city of Inglewood as well. I'm the human services superintendent here. Mm -hmm. uh, I work at the Inglewood Senior Center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, it's nice meeting you first. I, I, I just don't know why we have not met till now, <laughs> but I will, no I will get your information. So at the Inglewood Senior Center, we've conducted at least maybe five or six uh, vaccine mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they got their first dose and second dose. What makes it uh, great at the Inglewood Senior Center giving vaccine is a lot of the housing complexes are within a walking distance of the center. Mm -hmm. so they walk. And I, if I'm not mistaken, we probably gave over a thousand uh, vaccines, uh, uh, Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson. We actually scheduled uh, about a week and a half ago the, the uh, booster as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other thing that I want to talk about is LA County, I don't know how many, how many of you know, but there is actually a funding that is coming up if uh, you want to make your center as a vaccine center, if you're interested. They just asked us a couple of days ago and then we said, well, we're doing it, uh, so we might as well get paid for it. So. Uh, we're, we, we told them our interest that we will be doing the vaccine at our center and we're going to promote it in the uh, senior housing complexes. We have about eight uh, housing complexes uh, in the city. So um, I'm pretty sure we can work together before us. Sometimes when, when we're not doing it, we can refer them to you and vice versa. But I just want to let you know that we're out there as well. And... Um, at the beginning, we were doing for seniors, but now it's actually open for any person in the community. And we're located at 111 North Locust. I don't know if you know the okay. senior center. So that's where I am. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can uh, visit me or I will come in, uh, walk so to you so that we can work together. But I just kind of uh, chip in and, and uh, introduce myself. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I really appreciate that and getting that information. I love coming to meetings like this just to kind of put us on the map and uh, let people know what we're doing. So if any of you all are interested in being put on our listserv, um, coming to see the tour of a center or anything like that, please feel free to put your information in the chat and I'll take it down. And then I'll reach out to you. Um, we send out updates about COVID weekly we send out community updates, I mean, well, updates about our community center as well. So if any of you are interested in that information and staying abreast of well, what's occurring within um, the Inglewood Community Health Center, then please feel free to drop your information in the chat and I'll be sure to put it on our list here. Thanks, Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Any uh, more uh, qu questions for the uh, two presenters here? Uh, I, I I have a question, and I'm not sure. I, I, any of the uh, three um, guests here, um, you know, it seems like it's still very difficult to get to 100% vaccination. And uh, the more the more things uh, new uh, variants are coming in. Um, then the challenge for those who are highly hesitant or highly anti-vaccine are also getting sick. And so they are getting into the 
healthcare resources, and then uh, search signs of patients are not able to access healthcare for themselves. And I wonder how, if there are any other ideas that, that uh, the, the programs that you have could, could offer to uh, the community and have what kinds of strategies have you found successful when somebody is anti-vaccine uh, uh, group or hesitant? Uh, what kinds of strategy have been successful and what might be other strategies could be tried in the community? Dr. Kalat, did you want to say something? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Actually, uh, Tyra, uh, the, the programs that you were talking about, do they have any um, elements to deal with, uh, with the hesitation? It's, what I see is mostly it's to, again, uh, again you know, with the misinformation, with hesitancy, the best tool is education and talking to people about uh, the benefits of the vaccines. And um, it's uh, in, you know, in CDC website and, um, you know, the Department of Public Health, there's so much resources and information, but uh, it's really, um, it's very difficult when somebody is making their mind, especially when they take uh, things of what they see um, on TV and taking it like uh, um, in, in, a, in a politics kind of uh, perspective, it's very difficult to uh, convince people to take the vaccine if they feel like, you know, um, this is, I mean, I know like even certain uh, representatives in the Capitol Hill, they're saying that Omicron is, is something that's used in politics. And now like so many countries in the world, they have Omicron. So it's not something that uh, any party is using, um, you know? So these kind of um, uh, people, it's very difficult to educate, but certainly the people who are hesitant, um, there are so much resources there. Um, available for them to um, to learn about the vaccines, and, uh, especially um, the boosters too. And they I, sometimes they say, "Oh, uh, the vaccines uh, they're not sufficient, and um, we have to take the boosters." What well, this is when we educate them about even immunity, even our body system is not sufficient to keep the immunity for a longer time. So we uh, we need all the help so people don't get uh, negative outcomes and they have to go to the hospital for treatment, um, be in danger of uh, being in a mental region. Well, thank you so much for taking your time and, uh, and having those beautiful slides prepared. And it was, that was really a nice presentation and uh, so thank you so much. And uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas uh, wanted to uh, tell us what was going on with uh, COVID uh, with the seniors at his at uh, the senior center. He's the uh, Thomas. I call you the director of of the senior center in Inglewood, but I know you have another title. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm the uh, human services superintendent uh, of uh, Park, but um, we are under Parks Recreation Human Services Department, but uh, the senior center falls under my direction. So yes, my official title is human services superintendent. So do you want to tell us about uh, what was going on uh, pre yeah. and yeah. Pandemic and post, and with your people, and yes, yes, yes. Quickly, uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I just want to give you uh, what we're doing in the city of Inglewood uh, during the pandemic and post-pandemic. 
So, well, we're not post yet, we're still there, but. Yeah. Um, uh, so throughout the pandemic, we did not close the center, uh, meaning that we were, we have to, our nutrition, our job actually doubled because we have to deliver meals to the seniors, to their homes, uh, so that they won't come to the center or they won't get out so that they, because their safety and health is very important. As you know, this COVID uh, attacks mainly the most vulnerable, which is uh, our seniors. So um, throughout the pandemic, I'm so proud of our staff that we uh, delivered thousands and thousands. I don't have the number in front of me, but meals. So what we do is we have, how many of you have been in the Inglewood Senior Center, the new building? How, how many of you know it? Melon, I see Melon raising her hand. Yes, uh, we I had our me we had a meeting there as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We came for lunch and had, oh, right. Yeah. Had the tour. Uh, basically, uh, the nutrition uh, we've been delivering meals to them, um, uh, and also we continue to transport the critical dialysis and doctor's appointments. Uh, Basically, the seniors uh, were very ecstatic as far as, you know, throughout the pandemic, having a meal at home, delivering them. What we do is we have a commercial kitchen. We, we, uh, we cook it in the kitchen at the Inglewood Senior Center, but, and then we send them five meals that is refrigerated. So they put it in their refrigerator, and for five days, they have five meals that is uh, delivered for them in one day. And then every five days, a, 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 a driver delivers meals for them. We also had a live uh, YouTube classes that we were offering, exercise class, Tai Chi and Zumba and others so that they don't feel lonely uh, at home. And, and a lot of the seniors were very gracious. Right now at this time we're open, uh, the center is open but limited. A, a class is only under 10 people ba based on the guideline of the county. Uh, of course, social distance and mask, but uh, we have at least opened several classes uh, and that includes, includes the exercise class, Tai Chi, Zumba, knitting, and then also our computer lab, our billiard room, and our gym is open. So it's first come, first serve, they make appointment. And um, once it's 10 people, we close it and one, one hour class and then another class uh, once the 10 people are, uh, you know, we're full with the 10 people. We uh, So we continue to uh, find ways to be creative in these unprecedented times. Uh, we just gave mm, a turkey to all the seniors. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, one of our big donors of turkey every year for Thanksgiving, Snoop Dogg gives uh, close to 10,000 turkeys, I believe, to the city. And then what we do is, they put aside about 700 turkeys for the seniors and we just completed distributing them uh, on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Uh, for the home delivery meals, we deliver the turkeys for them. But uh, for those people who are able to come, we have like sort of like a drive through and, and they'll come and pick up their turkey, their cranberry sauce and the stuffing and whatever comes with it. Uh, so, uh, uh, our seniors are ecstatic uh, to come back, uh, the, you know, in limited capacity. But as you know, it affects all of us. We go, you know, uh, three, four uh, steps forward and we go back five spec, you know, spaces back because, you know, as with this variant and, and uh, we just cannot. But our seniors are always calling and saying when the center is going to be open because it's such a joy to have them. And it doesn't, the center doesn't feel good without them because they're the one who makes it, uh, you know, home away from home, as we call it. But we continue to find ways to serve them. As I said, right now, our home delivery meals, we continue to those people who are homebounded, we're delivering them. Our nutrition uh, continue to, uh, of course, uh, run at a full capacity. In fact, at some point, we were, our numbers almost quadrupled. And we have to ask LA County for the increase to get covered because uh, at the peak of the COVID, uh, you know, there were a lot of seniors 
that were requesting that. So we went by that. Our transportation continues to uh, transport, you know, doctor's appointments, uh, recreational dialysis, doctor's appointments and things like that. So we're operating. And then our center is now open for limited classes and activities. We are about we have about 13 classes, activities and programs that are open. Of course, as I said, first come, first serve. So uh, I think once the pandemic hit, it, it hit us really bad from having, you know, anywhere from 500, 600 daily seniors at the center being vibrant and active with 30 different programs. We, you know, we had to find a ways, creative ways to reach them. But uh, so far, so good. And hopefully this, we see the lights at the end of the tunnel and we go back to our normal daily activities, but that's what we're doing so far. If you have questions, I'll be happy to do. But right now, uh, our biggest thing is the Super Bowl. You know, as you know, Super Bowl is going to be taking place uh, in the beginning of February here in the city of Inglewood. The center is being uh, used for a lot of planning and uh, emergency uh, uh, as the EOC center, but it's not affecting us that much because, as you know, because of COVID, we're still delivering the meals, so we don't have seniors' presence. I don't know how we would have handled it if our seniors were there in addition to do this uh, uh, event, uh, huge event that we're doing with this uh, Super Bowl. So thank you for giving me the opportunity again. I love for, for us to participate and talk with the beach cities and with all the South Bay cities because it's always an opportunity for us to, uh, to share experiences, to, um, to learn from one another. And uh, today uh, when I heard T T Tony, Tanya, the one who was presenting from Inglewood. I look forward working with her because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that we're going to be uh, coordinating together. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad that you made the connection, the two of you. So that's what this is all about. That's what we're, you know, wanting to bring people together and uh, get to know because Inglewood and Hawthorne are two are two cities that our league covers, and uh, we have less uh, communication there. So this is really exciting uh, 